It's the Philips model 36PW9527-79R. The top left of the TV has got a little logo, Pixel Plus, so I'll refer to this TV as the Philips Pixel Plus from now on. The highlights for this TV is that it has a VGA input and it is also a HD CRT, that is it can display a um, 1080i signal. It doesn't actually do 720p and it will do 480p. Its vintage is 2002 roughly. It's a big TV, it's a 36 inch wide screen and it weighs 80 kilos plus. There are no inputs on the front of this television, however there's one set on the side here and it's got an S-Video composite stereo left and right in and headphone socket. Here at the back we've got a lot of connection options. Several composite, little use to us because of the low quality they produce. An S-Video <coughs> component input and another two component inputs up here, and a VGA. You'll note that the plastic area here is a light grey compared to the darker grey out here. Inside the chassis this light grey area is a removable module and I surmise that in different countries it would be fitted with different connectors. Maybe in Europe it's got a few scarts there but for the Aussie model we've got more component inputs. <coughs> I'll point out that here AV3 which is this whole section here it includes the VGA socket and the component input as well. These two actually share the same line inside the television and I don't like that design. For example, if you hook up Dreamcast there, or a laptop VGA, or and your Xbox 360 into there, so you've got them both plugged in, turn your TV onto AV3, and then turn both the systems on, you'll actually get both pictures coming into the TV at the same time trying to display at the same time and it's just a mismatch and I don't like the design I think that Philips should have kept it separate they should have named for example that this VGA was AV5 and can completely keep them discreet and I'll show you an example of it right now so here's the 360 plugged in via component into AV3 this is the one that shares the VGA socket watch what happens when I plug a PC in I've got a VGA cable in the back of the TV and I'm going to plug it into the side of my laptop into its VGA port. You might have noticed that it got a bit darker, but you'll also see, I zoom in, see the lines that have gone through the picture? And the screen's also flickering, I don't know if the camera's picking it, see the lines? So without even going too far, we've already got a clash going on here, the Xbox is still dominant but it's totally unacceptable. I'll see what happens if I go into a game. Oh, it's all garbled up badly. Look at the text. I'll disconnect the PC. Comes good. Yep, no good. Thumbs down for that. Well, I've got my laptop here. I've hooked it up to the TV, switched the Xbox off so there's no clash there going on. It's in 640x480 VGA. It's pretty limited, this TV, in its abilities to display different resolutions. I think I've had it on a different resolution with the Xbox, but it was only a widescreen version of the VGA. Very limited. The other thing that I don't like as well is that you can't put it into a 4-3 aspect ratio. So if you've got your Dreamcast hooked up, you have to have it stretched in a widescreen, and I don't like that. As far as the picture quality goes, don't expect it to match that of a computer monitor CRT. It's just not as sharp and vibrant as one of those. It's okay, but nothing to write home about. Back around the back again, I'm gonna explain something here. You're gonna to have to follow closely, and I'll do my best. Here's AV1 with component input. Now take note of this. This only displays 480i. It may also do 576i, but the point is it doesn't display a progressive signal. Whereas these two sets of component inputs up here in the HD section, they do both accept 480p and even 1080i. However, they do not accept what this bottom one does and that's 480i and probably 576i. That is very annoying and I'll demonstrate that with a Nintendo GameCube. So I've got a genuine GameCube component cable, there's the Nintendo end, 
and here's the component end. I'm putting it into AV1, which again is 480i. This is a NTSC Nintendo GameCube that I'm going to use, and it is by default, or it is when you turn it on, and it is 480i. That's it, that's what it produces. Here's the GameCube NTSC model. One of the ones that's got the digital AV out, that's where you need to tap into to get the component signal. Also, I'll put in an AV cable in there to get sound. The GameCube's ready to turn on the game's F0GX. It's got an option inside of it to go into progressive scan mode, which I'm going to do. GameCube's on. That's just a mod screen, mod chip screen boot up. Remember the GameCube's 480i. Would you like progressive scan mode? Yes. What's happened here? The screen's gone blue. The GameCube's sending out a 480p signal. As I said before, the TV doesn't accept 480p on the component input one. As you can hear, the game is going but it won't display. What do I do now? I have to plug it up to AV3 or AV4 to get 480p going. Now I've gone around to the back of the TV and pulled the plugs out of the, and put them into AV3. That line will accept 480p. I'll change it over. There we go, we've got F0GX in 480p. The problem is though, you think, well, the game's working, just leave it on AV3, leave the GameCube hooked up to that. But the problem is that not every game on the GameCube has progressive scan mode support. And not only that, the boot up sequence of the GameCube's always in 480i. When I turn the system off and turn it back on, it'll boot up in 480i. And because AV3 on this TV doesn't accept a signal of that type, you won't see any picture. Power on. Nothing. The GameCube's still operating in the background. You can hear it. The problem with this incompatibility on the AV ports on this TV is going to be an issue with the GameCube, the Xbox, and the PS2. A lot of their games, or some of their games, as I said before, support progressive scan, but a lot don't. So if you're going backwards and forwards between those two types, it's not going to work on this TV. You're going to have to pull plugs out and put them back in all the time. And that's a deal breaker for me. Just for that alone, I wouldn't have this TV in my collection. I have been able to get into the service menu, and to do that, you push 0625969 info button on the remote. And there it is. The service menu has been accessed. I'll change the background so you can see it a bit more easily. And check out that operation now, 7920. That's how much use this TV's had. I'm not the original owner. I'll probably only put 10 or 20 hours through it. That's a good point to bring up here that all my televisions are second hand and I don't know how much they've been used and there's a fair chance that they have deteriorated somewhat in picture quality. It's not a reflection of a brand new television what I say. I've got the service menu up still and I've also connected the pattern generator up to get this pattern on the screen. I've done all the tweaking I can to get it better. You can see there that it's, it's not quite straight with the edge of the tube. It disappears off into the corner a little bit. It's not bad. This TV does have a little bit of blurring in the corners, yet another common problem in CRT. Another point I'll make, if you go into the service menu, make sure you write down everything that you change so that hopefully if you make any stuff up so you can just change it back to the way it was and have no problem thereafter. And also, this TV, it has separate geometry menus for the different inputs. So look now, you see Geo Geometry HDTV. This is for AV3 and AV4. This is what I'd be primarily using this TV for. And you want to make your adjustments here. If you go, for example, 
GEO43, this will make adjustments for the composite inputs on this television and won't have any bearing at all on the HD inputs. This one took me a while to figure out because I made adjustments on the other GEO settings and then when I put on the 360 and played it, none of those changes came into effect. Here's the 360. I'm in the display settings. I'm going to put it onto 480p and then I'm going to put it onto 1080i after and have a look to see if there's any difference. Here's the title screen of Super Street Fighter 4. I want to point out the, the edges of the letters here. See the jagginess? The console's been changed into 1080i. We'll have a look at the title screen of Super Street Fighter 4 now. Here's the title screen now. It does appear a little bit jaggy still on the camera, but I can show you in person that that jagginess is completely gone on the screen. So the 1080i is a definite improvement and I would recommend it over 480p. It's not a huge massive jump in picture quality, but it is an improvement and that's what you'd want to set it on. I'll show you a little bit of in-game. There's not a lot of point to this because I can't really capture the image without a very expensive video camera but I feel the review wouldn't be complete without some actual in-game presentation. I might as well comment on what I think of the picture while I'm here. Funny thing is, I picked up a new television yesterday. It's a HD Sony TV, and that's given me a new reference to compare these HD CRTs to. I have to say the Sony is better than this. This has more of a natural picture than the Sony. The Sony is very vibrant, almost too strong in the rich, but it is also very sharp. This TV's good. It's good. The picture is good, but it's not quite as vivid, not quite as sharp as the Sony. So it's just a middle, sort of middle rank TV. One other thing I'd like to point out, and it didn't do this today, this TV sometimes, when I set it on 1080i, has a very noticeable high pitch sound coming out of the rear of the TV. It's not coming out of the speakers, it's actually coming out of the TV circuitry itself and it's very noticeable and it is quite annoying. I don't know why it does it, I don't know if it's a fault, obviously it is because it's not doing it now, it hasn't done it for me to today, but if you were to have that issue with this TV, it would be a deal breaker I reckon for you as it is a deal breaker for me. I want to show you something with the Wii. Here are my settings. I'll put it on the standard 4.3. I'll change the TV over to match that too in a moment. Resolution 480i. Of note, the Wii is hooked up to the TV with a component cable, so we're running 480i over component right now. I've got the Virtual Console Game Strider here. This is the Mega Drive version start that up. I'll set the TV itself onto 4.3 to get Strider to appear more authentic. Just letting you know the picture doesn't look anywhere near good as a 15 kilohertz good old SCART RGB television with a Mega Drive hooked up. This TV is 100 hertz and plays shenanigans with the picture. You don't get the scan lines. It doesn't look as good as the real deal. Now what I want to show you is something that Nintendo has included. This game is running in 480i right now, but there's actually a way to turn it into 240p. And to do so, you go into the operations guide. And you need an unchuck connected into the Wii controller. What you need to do is hold down A plus the 1 button on the remote and Z on the nunchuck. Hear the beep? That's confirmed that it's worked and it's now in 240p mode. There is also another code to go back into 480i. Now going back into the game, this is now in 240p, but there is actually virtually no difference on this television here. No difference in the appearance. However, the last time I did this, and I'm sure I'll be able to pick up on it again, is it does introduce some little glitches into the picture. Still running 240p and I've noticed that the game has started to go a bit jerkier in motion and I don't know if you can notice this but that green background is actually tearing a lot when I'm moving along. Oh it's bad when you jump. I don't know how it's going to show on the camera but I can assure you that it is troublesome. 
I'm demonstrating you this because there are a lot of TVs out there that have trouble running 240p over a component line and this is one of them. No big deal. I don't see much use for it on this setup. I didn't show you before but the TV is made in Belgium. That's pretty cool. To summarize it, if you want to use this TV for the old consoles, there wouldn't be any point. It doesn't have any scarts to hook them up with. Even if you could, it wouldn't look really any good because the TV's got 100 hertz digital processing. It just makes things look ugly. You don't get your scan lines. So that brings us up to a newer line of consoles, the Xbox, the GameCube, and the PS2. As noted before, some of the games on that system do support progressive scan, but a lot don't. And you'll have to swap cables over left, right, and center if you want to do that. If you want to play in progressive and or interlaced, and for me that's a deal breaker. So there, I'd already automatically chuck the TV out. I'll probably sell it off for that reason. Is there actually any use for this one? Well, you could run the Wii or the PS3 or the Xbox 360. They all run a progressive signal. The Wii's, 99% of the Wii games support progressive scan, so you won't have any cable swapping troubles. I'm not sure about the virtual console there, so I won't comment on that. There's one other thing that I didn't go into depth in this review was the input lag on the TV. You can go and see my other video on input lag testing of older CRTs. I go into depth on this Philips Pixel Plus there, and it did result in a good, pretty low score of 9 milliseconds with Rock Band 3. That was with a component signal. It jumps up a lot in lag on composite, but you're not going to run composite anyway. With that said, the input lag being low, this could be a suitable TV to use for your fighting games on the 360 and the PS3. Low input lag, fairly big screen, 36 inch. It's not going to be a 50 or a 65 like a plasma, but if you're fussy over input lag, this could be the way to go. Not too bad of a picture, but I can't really recommend this TV. Not when there's others out there that are quite cheap. Not really much point to buy this one. Once again, thanks for watching and keep an eye on my channel. I try and put a video up every week.